Welcome to our review on loudspeakers and microphones. So the first device we're going to look at are microphones. Now, the first type of a microphone is what's called a dynamic microphone, and like the one I'm using to record these videos. Now, the way that dynamic microphones work are rather like generators. So you've got a diagram on the right there that shows you their setup. So we've got a magnet with a coil of wire surrounding it, and then at the front, that's actually in contact with that coil of wire, you can see we've got this thing called a diaphragm. Now, one thing that we need to know, first of all, is that sound itself is a pressure wave. So that tells us we've got these areas of high pressure called compressions and these areas of low pressure called rarefactions. Now, when we actually have the sound wave hitting the diaphragm, then the compressions, those areas of high pressure, are going to push the diaphragm in. Whereas when those rarefactions come into contact with it, it's going to pull it out again. Now, what we see is as a result of the coil being attached onto that diaphragm, then as the diaphragm moves in and out, the coil will as well. Because it's then moving over the magnet, that means that the coil is cutting those magnetic field lines, which means we're going to induce a potential difference in the actual wire itself. Now, that potential difference obviously drives the current, which is the electrical signal that the microphone actually produces. A second type of microphone that we could have is a carbon microphone. Now, in a carbon microphone, what we actually have behind that diaphragm are these granules of carbon. As that sound wave hits the diaphragm, the resistance of the carbon is then changed, which means that we will then have a different current passing through as that resistance changes. So when the resistance is high, it's only a low current, but when the resistance is low, then the current is much higher. And that is going to be then translated by the actual computer into the sound that you've produced. So the second device we're going to look at are loudspeakers. Now, loudspeakers behave rather like a motor. So we could actually generate a simple loudspeaker just by having a paper cone, a piece of wire and a pair of magnets. So that if you connected the ends of the wire to a changing potential difference of suitable frequency, you'll be able to hear a sound. Just remember that if the frequency is either too high or too low, then we won't be able to hear it because humans only have a limited range of hearing. And as you get older, the bad news is it gets narrower. So the way in which this works is that that changing potential difference produces a changing current. Now, because that current is changing and it's within a magnetic field, then we end up with a force being produced on that coil of wire, just like we've seen with our motors. So as a result of that force being produced on the coil of wire, the coil is going to move and it's then going to push on the diaphragm. So the diaphragm will move in and out. And as it does so, it pushes on the particles in the air, causing compressions and rarefactions, which is our sound wave. Now, what we will actually find is that the movement of the coil itself will depend on the size of the potential difference, hence why we can get those different sounds coming out of our loudspeaker.